Good morning, John. I've been saving this one for a long time. I'm very excited about it because there is something very bizarre about the universe. But before I get to it, look at this beauty. Look at this. This is the one week, the, just until the end of this week, you can get shirts that will someday be legendary. And if they were Pizza Miss pants, they would also be amazing, but we don't, so I don't know why I'm talking about it, except to say that these shirts go with any pants. But back to the topic at hand. The universe is a very, very, very big place, possibly infinite. And yet, as far as we can tell, both the hottest and the coldest place in the universe is the same place. And I know this sounds like a riddle, but it's not. The second coldest place in the known universe, as we all, of course, know and talk about at parties and on office Zoom calls, is the Boomerang Nebula. It is expelling matter out of it, and the most energetic matter leaves more easily, leaving behind the less energetic matter, which is basically how sweating cools you off. Like, the hotter molecules of water evaporate, leaving behind the colder molecules. Now, most of the universe is quite cold, 2.7 Kelvin on average, but the Boomerang Nebula is a mere 1 Kelvin just one degree Celsius above absolute zero. Think of it, 1.7 degrees Celsius colder than the rest of the universe. They must be there being like, brr, but you can't hear them because it's in space. But the coldest place in the known universe is so much colder than the Boomerang Nebula, like wildly colder. And I'm gonna let you imagine, like where would it be? What nebula is colder than that? It is, at any given moment, in a laboratory on the planet Earth. Which is not even a nebula, it's a room. Now different labs trade back and forth, which is the coldest at any given time. But the coldest we have ever gotten something is so much colder than we could imagine happening naturally, that outside of other intelligent systems like us, we're pretty sure that it is the coldest any matter in the universe has ever gotten. So like, go Earth! And like, I, I hope you're clapping at home, because Earth is where you are. It's where you're from. It's like you're Planet. So the Boomerang Nebula is 1 Kelvin. The coldest we've ever gotten something on the planet Earth is 38 picokelvins. That's 38 trillionths of a Kelvin. Humans! Like, let's see a goose do that! Now, there is maybe a problem. Uh, cause there's always a problem. And the problem is that black holes are very weird. You might think that black holes are hot, and like, maybe they are. I don't know what it's like inside of a singularity. But they have mass. And we used to think they didn't emit any energy, so they would have, like, zero temperature? Like, they would be zero Kelvin? But it turns out they do emit some radiation. It's called Hawking radiation, and I don't understand it. And if you call the amount of radiation coming off a black hole its heat, then a black hole the mass of the sun would still be warmer than that lab in Germany where they made it 38 picokelvin. But the biggest black holes would actually be colder than that? But what we're doing is just like taking the amount of radiation and dividing by the mass of the object. And I don't think that's what we mean when we say cold. So some people will say that black holes are the coldest thing in the universe. I don't think that's what cold is. And I am very qualified to say what I think cold is because it's what I think. So I guess in that way, like go black holes, you did it. But like, they don't actually need my validation. That's the weirdest thing about black holes actually is that they, they don't need any external validation. They just only care what they think about themselves, which I don't know what that would be like. So that's cold. What about heat? So again, the universe is a very big place and there are lots of tremendously energetic things happening inside of it. There's giant stars, there's supernova, there's black holes ramming into neutron stars. There's Barbie and Oppenheimer coming out on the same day in the middle of summer. That was very exciting. Like, and that can only happen in this universe. But just to start off with something that's gotta be pretty close to the top, right? The core of our sun is 15 million Kelvin. That's about 30 million degrees Fahrenheit. The core of a supergiant star, though, might have a temperature of over a billion Kelvin, so the sun's not so hot. I'm gonna forget to bring those sunglasses back inside and Catherine's gonna be so mad when she can't find them. Current Hank editing the video and would you believe they're still right there. This is three days later and I still haven't brought them inside. There's the pizza John sign. I'm gonna do it right now. But even hotter than that, a supergiant star going supernova at the end of its life could in some areas produce a temperature that is over a hundred billion Kelvin. You know how many degrees Fahrenheit over absolute zero that is? It's like all of them. Every degree got together and had a party and it was at the core of a supernova. So give it all of that. As far as we can tell, the hottest thing that has happened in the universe since the Big Bang, so not just like recently, but for the last 13.7 billion years, the hottest thing that has happened in the universe happened on the planet Earth. It happened in a particle accelerator and the temperatures that the particles reached was not a hundred billion Kelvin. It was not a trillion Kelvin. It was seven trillion Kelvin. To get a sense of the scale here, imagine something small and something big. 
Uh, and the small thing is the core of a giant star going supernova, and the big thing is just a particle accelerator going faster and furiouser here on the planet Earth. Now look, the universe is big and weird and we don't completely understand it, so maybe there are events that are hotter than this. But we don't know about. And also, many, many billions of years from now, the universe might expand so much that it will get even colder than that laboratory in Germany. Which, like, fine, go off. But it seems like, maybe, in the middle time, between the Big Bang and billions and billions of years from now, at the heat death of the universe, the hottest thing and the coldest thing that has ever happened, happened in one very tiny little corner of the universe during a very short period of time. Both of those temperatures seem unlikely to exist naturally in the entire rest of an infinite universe. That's us. Sometimes I feel like in the scale of the cosmos, we are so clearly insignificant. And sometimes I think that there's like nothing more significant than us. And I'm really not sure which one it is. John, I'll see you tomorrow. And until then, Pizzamas products are available now at Pizzamas.com or at the Pizzamas app. And they're so great that you will not be mad at the rest of your shirts so much as disappointed in them. You look at the rest of your shirts and be like, I don't just, I don't see it anymore. I'm just gonna throw them away. Don't throw them away. But the Pizzamas shirts are only available this week. And at the end of the week, never again, no matter what, no amount of pleading will change my mind. You think you can boss me on this? You can't. These shirts are limited like we all are limited. Love these shirts because they are like us both the hottest and the coolest thing in the universe.